Hello, my name is Mia and in this presentation I am going to talk about pre-pro-insulin mRNA engineering and its application to the regulation of insulin secretion with my colleague Prabjot. Insulin synthesis. Insulin is the hormone which regulates blood glucose levels. It is synthesized in significant quantities only in beta cells found in the pancreas. The insulin mRNA is translated as a single chain precursor called pre-pro-insulin. Its removal of the single peptide during insertion into the endoplasmic rectilium generates pro-insulin, consisting of three domains, amino acid, terminal B chain, carboxyl A chain, and there is also a connecting peptide in the middle, a C peptide. We will talk about work done by researchers that have engineered the pre-pro-insulin messenger RNA as to destabilize it through nonsense mediated messenger RNA decay when expressed under transcriptional regulation in Hep G2 hepatomas. Hep G2 cells. This diagram shows the Hep G2 cells. Hep G2 has a chromosomal number of 55. It secretes plasma proteins such as albumin. Hep G2 cells are a suitable in vitro model system for the study of polarized human hepatocytes. Because of their high degree of morphological and functional differentiation. Nonsense mediated messenger RNA decay. Through the investigation of the destabilization of pre pro insulin messenger RNA through engineering nonsense mediated messenger RNA decay and its effect on the dynamics of insulin secretion from recombinant Hep G2 hepatomas, the implications of the findings in producing appropriately secreting non beta cells with transcription regulation of insulin expression are discussed in this presentation. Nonsense mediated messenger RNA decay is a messenger RNA surveillance pathway which actively ensures the rapid degradation of messenger RNAs containing premature translation termination codons. Plasmids for insulin expression. Plasmids are DNA molecules separate from DNA found in the nucleus. They can replicate independently. This graph shows vectors A to G. A to E are five plasmids constructed to systematically increase expression of insulin in Hep G2 cells. Vectors F and G are TET responsive plasmids with one and three copies respectively of pre pro insulin complementary DNA. For the control plasmid containing one copy of insulin gene, a 360 base pair restriction fragment containing the furin compatible insulin gene with B10 mutation was connected to the backbone in vector F and two additional copies were inserted of the insulin gene into the backbone of vector G. In this experiment, the luciferase assay was followed using the wild type vanilla luciferase as the control reporter vector, which you can see circled here. The human cytomegalovirus CMV promoter used to drive insulin gene. As you can see, the CMV promoter was connected to the different sites to prepare the plasmid with an intron or to prepare the plasmid without an intron. They contain complementary DNA of 158 base pair restriction fragments containing both the simian virus SC40, late polyadenylation, and SC40 enhancer signals from the plasmid PGL3 control ProMega. It was used to replace the SC40 late polyadenylation signal in the luciferase to repair the plasmid with the SC40 enhancer. Adenylation provides stability to the messenger RNA. Pre-pro-insulin messenger RNA engineering and expression. Tetracycline controlled transcription activation is a regulatory method of inducible expression. Transcription is reversibly turned on and off through the presence of the antibiotic tetracycline, its derivative syncus doxycycline, which was used to incubate the tet of transfected Hep G2 cells after the insertion into the multiple clonic sites of promoted Renilla luciferase. Translation inhibition test. A control experiment was performed to elude elucidate whether nonsense mediated messenger RNA decay was indeed involved in shortening the half-life of the engineered pre pro insulin messenger RNA. Since normal messenger RNA and nonsense mutants are distinguished from each other by translation, the effect of inhibiting translation on the levels of control and engineered pre pro insulin messenger RNA was examined. Hep G2 hepatomas transfected trans 
infected with control or engineered PPI messenger RNA and the tet of control were maintained in dox free medium and exposed to cyclohexamide at time zero. The engineered over control pre pro insulin messenger RNA ratio at time zero was defined as 100%. After four hours of cyclohexamide treatment, this ratio increased to 490% compared to the cyclohexamide free culture. Upon withdrawing cyclohexamide to resume translation, the engineered over control pre pro insulin messenger RNA ratio decreased toward the basal level. In conclusion, the engineered pre pro insulin messenger RNA level and of the insulin secretion rate declined faster upon switching off transcription compared to the one copy non engineered control. Nonsense mediated mRNA decay improved the secretory response of Hep G2 cells but also reduced intracellular pre pro insulin messenger RNA levels and thus insulin expression. The specificity of the TET off system and the subtoxic DOX concentration used in this study increased the fidelity of messenger RNA half life measurements compared to the experiments with non specific inhibitors. One concern in determining insulin secretion dynamics with the TET responsive system is the pharmacokinetics of DOX. This work constitutes the first step towards developing potentially autologous, genetically engineered, transcriptionally controlled non-beta cells for treatment of insulin-dependent diabetes. Clearly, the non-mediated messenger RNA deficiency, mediated improvement of secretion dynamics will need to be validated in primary cells expressing insulin under a glucose-responsive promoter. In this, it is important that the host cells and the insulin gene be of the same species, as species mismatch may alter the stability of pre pro insulin messenger RNA considerably. It should be noted, however, that there exists no evidence that the nonsense mediated mRNA decay methodology would be not applicable to primary cells. Finally, the recombinant cells will need to be studied in an in vivo situation as the insulin secretion dynamics might differ in culture and in vivo. Here is a list of our references. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.